It comes in waves, grief does. It is not a constant thing, and when you think you're moving on, another wave can hit you by surprise and leave you right back in the place you were trying to crawl out of. A big part of my life for the last 18 months has been adjusting to a world in which two of my friends are no longer present. Unexpected deaths, relatively young, lives cut short, ministries in the church unfinished, and friends left behind. I am a friend left behind. And so as I approach the Easter story this year, my eye is drawn very strongly to those who make their way to the tomb to anoint the body of the Lord. They were grieving. The Gospels tell of a number of people who make their way to the tomb in the first light of day. Women, first and foremost, in their love and in their grief. What are they thinking as they make their way to the tomb? Well, I have preached on the way they were thinking, but this year I can feel it. Waves of grief, numbness, and despair. Grief comes in waves. And in those depths, grief is the most bitter companion. And I will admit to not always having been myself when I have felt those waves of, waves of grief. I have not always been the person I'd want to be. And this year I have found myself not living in the kind of world that I would want to live in either. There is much that leaves me grieving for the better world that we glimpsed and saw snatched away. The continuing Russian war directed against Ukraine has destabilized a Europe which had seemed to be looking for the way of peace. The ongoing horror in the Middle East has not simply destabilized the world, it has just disturbed our minds, and it has made peace, salam and shalom, feel agonizingly out of reach. Warmongering, terrorized terrorism, the weaponizing of civilians, these leave me grieving for the world I had hoped for. For too many months, gross injustice in Gaza has been played out on our news screens. For too many months, kidnapped hostages have been away from all whom they love. It is easy this year to feel that hope has been killed, has been buried forever in a cold, stone-sealed tomb. But comes the dawn. But comes the dawn and come the women to the tomb. They come weeping. They return rejoicing. The news that they proclaim on Easter Day is that death never does have the last word. Hope triumphs when everything seems lost. Have we ever needed to hear the news of Easter more, that Jesus is risen from the grave, that despair does not win, that green blades of growth rise from everything that has seemed buried and gone for good. Grief comes in waves, but so does love. And the waves of love that spread out from what those women shared in the first light of the first Easter, it changed the world, changed our world, and it will go on changing the world in which we live. God has not forgotten the brokenhearted. God has not forgotten the grief-stricken. God has not forgotten those for whom despair has become part of who they are. The wave of God's love did not begin on Easter Day. It is as old as time. But Christ risen from the grave is when we witness its greatest triumph. Love, hope, and belief in new life are not optional extras for Christian people. They, these are the reasons that we are who we are. These are the reasons that we do what we do. Despair and grief are real. Even the bitter grief of hopes dashed. But the story of who we are does not conclude 
by the side of a grave. Our story begins at an empty tomb. And yes, the world is a mess, but it has you and I in it. And we know by the story that we preach and proclaim that new life is our inheritance and our hope. New life is the world's inheritance and hope. Things never have to remain the same. This year will be a year of enormous change in this world, momentous change. This is the year in which more people will vote in elections than have ever done since the democratic era began. Every part of our world needs people who believe in a better world, a world where justice for the poor and integrity for those who govern and kindness for those who troubled, who are troubled, where these things are the building blocks of the world we wish to see. This year, our election process in this country could well be a painful and hurtful time. It demeans us all when an election is portrayed in the simplistic banality of a phrase such as stop the boats. Such language threatens those who need help most. It diminishes us all. It is the language of the tomb. We need to move that conversation away from stop the boats towards stop the hatred. Xenophobia, fear of foreigners, and naked racism are already dancing behind the words of too much electioneering. But ultimately, it will not win. Good people believe in better things. God's people believe in better things. Sometimes hope feels like something you have to determinedly try to drag out of yourself. But sometimes it bursts forth from nowhere. A wave of love, joy, hope, and peace bursts unexpectedly from our inner tomb. The promise of Easter is not that new life is possible. It is that it is inevitable, and I believe it. Christians believe in a better world than the world we have, a world where the poor are fed, the lonely are comforted, and the sound of war is heard no more. We believe in salvation, the very healing of the world. The story that we are caught up in as Christians on Easter Day is the story of salvation. And salvation is not the church bobbing around on the waves of the world, plucking a few lucky souls to safety. Salvation is the great wave of God's love that will sweep us all home. The news of that wave of love is heralded in the song of birds at dawn. It is ready to burst forth in the buds on the trees and the green shoots springing from the earth. And it is alive in our hearts. Early this morning in this place, we baptized people into this story, confident that they will bring new life into this world, confident that they will rise with Christ. Early this morning, we lit a fire and brought light into the church, proclaiming that gloom won't win. Light and glory will cast every shadow away. Early this morning, Christ rose from the grave. Not only is death not the end, but new life is real. The wave of God's love has reached all the world. It has even reached here. It has even come to you. I believe in things worth believing in. We believe in things worth believing in. New life for all. Love, joy, peace.
peace in abundance. And I believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. For if Christ was not risen from the grave, then we would not be gathered here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.